Please. Surely you can spare five minutes to talk to your wife. You know I'd love to, but I've really got to get to the hospital, so... It's almost like you don't want to talk to me. Look, we're having a conversation now, aren't we? It's... No, I mean, like, a real one where we share our worries and our concerns. I'm it's... sorry, I've just, I've just got to get to work. <sighs> hey! hey. Um, maybe we can pick this up later? Yeah, right. Well, that's never going to happen. Mm. <laughs> right, maybe, uh... I'll just leave you two to it. Oh, talk about bad timing. I'm so sorry. I just... Well, I was just thinking about you. I wanted to check you were OK. Thank you. At least someone is. Drop a coffee. Mm. I tried talking to him. Yeah, well, sometimes you just have to push harder. Well, all he's interested in is pretending he's living his old life without me. I mean, that's where he's so keen to get to now. Well, then. At least you know where he is. Maybe you're right. Otherwise, I could be waiting for ages for him to talk to me. Whereas if I go there and confront him, then he's going to have to talk to me. Oh, brilliant. I'm the last person you expected to see. You could say that, as this is my garden. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, I was, I was looking for someone. Spare me the excuses. My neighbours told me someone keeps turning up. Me? No, no, you've, you've got it wrong. You see an empty house for sale, think you can help yourself, is that it? I'm sorry, I don't know what you think this is, but, but it isn't, so excuse me. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're going nowhere till I've had some answers. Trust me. The mood I'm in, you don't want to do that. Sorry. I have clearly just made a mistake, so if you'd please stop filming and just let me pass. No, no, no. I want this on record. Why are you doing this? What's wrong with you? You're the one who's trespassing, not me. This is my house. Have you got any idea what I've been through lately? My stepdaughter died. My husband is acting so weird and my friend has just been killed, so I am seriously... I am. And what's this rubbish, anyway? Why did you do that? Have you got any idea what that means? Do you know what? Two people can play that game. Get out of my way, or so help me God, the gnome gets it. Call the police. Of course she did. What's going on here? This woman's trespassing on my property. She's deranged. I'm deranged? He's practically holding me hostage. I've got it all in on camera. Oh, film this, you saddo. Right. I want to press charges. Criminal damage. I'll show you criminal damage. Madam. Oh, no, you're not, you're not going to arrest me, are you? Hi, Leah. Hi, it's, uh, it's not what it seems. This isn't my best look. You're accusing this woman of smashing your property. You saw her do it. First degree no aside, it's a fair cop officer. <laughs> and trespass, and abusive behaviour. I told you I was a woman on the edge and you pushed me right over it. Come on, pack me up, Liam. You know why I'm here. Well, I... I'm not sure I do. That gnome was a one-off, a collector's piece, a unique selling point. Have you got any idea how long this house has been on the market? Oh, I will buy you a new one. Please don't arrest me. She's been lurking in these bushes for weeks, upsetting the neighbours. Well, maybe I have. There's a good reason for that. I've heard enough excuses. I'm still pressing charges. We'd best sort this out down the station. And you can take your shoddy woodwork with you. If you'd like to come with me. I paid for the damages, so I got off with a caution. And then I cried, so they gave me a tissue, a cup of tea and a lift home in a squad car. <laughs> you took the blame for everything. Well, it wasn't you, was it, that smashed that poor bloke's prize gnome? But you wouldn't have been there in the first place if it wasn't for me, yeah? And you've been going there every day. 
How long have you known? Since you started. Well, since you said that you did. I went to the hospital, you see, to surprise you. And, um, well, they told me they'd never heard of you. So I followed you to the crematorium and then to the house. You, you didn't confront me? No, because it was just enough to know where you were. And then you'd come home after a day in that garden and you seemed calmer. God, like it had brought you just a little bit of peace. So I'll let it go. I just, I just can't imagine how betrayed you must feel. I am. Um, I just lost our baby and um, oh, you were absent. And I had a business to run. You know, so the only way I could carry on was pretend that everything was okay when it wasn't. I guess your pain came first. Then I lost Andrea, you know, and Priya is in the hospital. Everything, everything just felt so horrible. I just, I couldn't pretend anymore. Nor should you have to. You know, I've never needed you more. But you just kept living that lie. Tracy said I had to speak to you, so, um... Well, one of us had to make the first move, didn't they? So, that's why you were at the house today? Yeah. To tell you that I'm done with the lies. And... you done with me? Neither of us can carry on like this, can we? No, nor should we. Please, if you can bear it, just, uh, just let me explain. No, Leanna took her first steps in that garden. <laughs> and when she was older, she, uh, she insisted on camping out there with me and her mother, no matter what the temperature was outside. So it was just all three of us, huddled together. And then we lost Lara, so it was just us two. And now leanna has gone. No, they both are. Um, when I stepped into our garden, it felt like they were still with me. I mean, even though I knew the house didn't belong to me, it just had to go back. Uh, staying away was just, just unthinkable. So, uh, work, surgery, patience, you know, uh, I just took my leave, uh, and then uh, I had to lie to you because how could I expect you to understand? You know? I tried. And the more I lied, the more the lie became my truth, and then it was easier to pretend I was working at the hospital than to be honest with the woman that I love more than I can say. You know, we lost our baby, and I failed you. But you've never wavered. You have never failed me. It's the living who matter, not the dead. I'm so sorry. Oh, you don't have to be sorry. No, I, I want you. I want us. <laughs> Tell me how to begin. I'll show you. Um, just give me a few minutes, stay here, and um, I'll be back. Ta-da! I nailed it up. Crooked, and I hit me thumb. The birdhouse. No, police didn't want it, so I brought it back. But we can get some bird food later, and you can come here and watch them on your allotment. Well, this is for me. Yeah, well, not all of it. The uh, parish councillor turning it into allotments. You know, local food for local people. And I put your name down first. I thought, where you lead, others will follow. I see. Well, I know that this isn't the garden that Leanna grew up in. But this was a home. She loved here and she was loved. Yeah, it was. And you can come here any time you like. You can plant what you want. And I'll just be around the corner, you know. So I have to be alone. I've never been alone, have I? Through my darkest moments, you've never given up on me. And I never will. I can do this. Anna will always be with you. 
No matter where you are. No, then. Thank you. <laughs>